In this Debaco University video, I'm going to go over how to actually measure liquid volume, which might seem very rudimentary, but it's a skill you're going to be carrying through many of the labs. You want to reduce the chance of error. So I'm going to go over how to accurately do this. All right, let's get into measuring volume. Well, a lot of people go grab a beaker. Well, I strongly advise against this because if you look at the beaker itself, it tells you it's an approximate volume. It tells you these volume markings are plus or minus 5%. Not really highly accurate there. So avoid using this equipment. It's good for a rough idea, but beakers, flasks are not used for accurate readings for volumes. The correct size for the intended volume can be measured, give you a general idea, but not something we really want to utilize to accurately measure our volumes. When we're looking at actually measuring our volumes and we look really close, particularly we might be using, say, a graduated cylinder, which is what we should be utilizing, we're going to see something called a meniscus. Now, most of the time we're going to see a meniscus, it's going to basically look like this. And it's a curved portion on the upper port on the upper part of the liquid. Always read from the apex of the curve. And I say that because most of the time you're going to see it like this because you're going to be reading water. Uh, if you're working with mercury, which probably you won't be, but I just want to let you be aware of, the meniscus is actually going to be the opposite. We can kind of see that in this image right here. Now, mercury's got a meniscus like this. Water's got a meniscus like this. So again, most you're going to be reading from the bottom or that apex. Mercury, you're going to be reading from the top portion there. And you always want to be reading at eye level there. So you want to be looking above and looking down. You want to be down looking up. You want to be at eye level with wherever that uh, container rests. And that concave of the meniscus, again, showing you the apex of that curve there. Most liquids like water on glass are going to have that kind of curve going this way because it's kind of utilizing that to kind of climb up the walls there. It's the adhesive, adhesive forces between the liquid and the container that's causing that to occur. But to be accurate, we want to always measure at the bottom of that. Uh, the convex meniscus, here we always want to measure the top. That's why I say utilizing the apex. This is what mercury looks like. You probably haven't seen it um, in real life, but it's as it is a metal that acts as a liquid, as you can see here, easily being poured. When put into a container, because of its attraction, it's going to actually have the opposite effect as, say, the water. So we would read from the apex, again, of that curve there. In this case, it would be the top there, which you probably will not be working well with mercury. Make sure you're taking those readings at eye level. You know, you want to be getting a false reading. You're looking at a very precise area here. You want to make sure you're reading it at that eye level so you're able to ensure you're getting that precise reading there. You can see there's water and mercury, kind of giving you the idea. Being at the eye level is the key for this. Common equipment, as I said, uh, uh, graduated cylinders we'll be using most of the time. Uh, burette is also something. Uh, and you can see here as we zoom in, definitely it's not a flat line. There definitely is a little bit of a curve to that. Um, so be mindful of where that curve is. Now measuring, we talk about significant figures. This is going to be something we're going to be really, uh, it's going to be really important throughout um, all of your chemistry and calculations. Read volume, use certain, uh, certain digits in one, what's called an uncertain digit. Certain digits are the ones that are actually uh, known with complete confidence based on the measuring device scale and calibration you're utilizing. Uncertain digits is an estimated digit. It's a measure that represents a best guess of where that smallest division lies. So if we look here, when we're measuring our certain and uncertain digits, here we're looking at measuring a ruler. So I know it's not liquid, but same concept would apply to this um, length of tubing. And we could see here uh, 5, and we'll be trading set down here, it's 5.2. And then the uncertain digit would be that three, because we look exactly where that is, looks like about three tenths between there and there. So again, the 0.2 is known, because we can see that right here, it's just beyond that. So we know the two is known. Some people might say, oh, that's a 5.22, just 5.23. Uh, so again, that's where the uncertainty plays into this as well. Now, measuring volume in action here, just to give you some examples uh, for tritation, a titration set up with a, a, a burette. The volume readings from the burette involve certain and uncertain digits, just as we saw there. Here we're looking at millimeters. We're measuring, we're looking at where those measurements might lie with that uncertain digit. Can all agree we're at the 21 point, uh, um, 20 uh, point one something. So that certain digit would be the point 0.1. And the uncertain digit will be that number after on there. So we can clearly see how that plays into this here. 
Now let's look at some examples here. So step one is to find this certain digit. See here, looking at our water and our graduating cylinder, there are two um, graduated cylinders below. Looking at our meniscus here, we're going through and each in this example is representing one milliliter. So you wanna be mindful, mindful of the scale you're using. Here we see 50, here we see 60. There's 10 lines between those. So each one of these represents one. So we find the certain digits. We definitely have uh, 51. Uh, right, we're looking at right here, this is where the bottom is, so 51, 52 is a certain digit. We're not yet above that 53 marking. If we have another uh, graduated cylinder, can keep in mind these could be by twos, these could be by halves, so in this example it's by ones. Then we take the estimated here, so we're looking at 50, um, 1, 52, and where does this exactly lie at the apex of this curve? And that is here it's estimating at 0.8, so this volume would be simply 52.8 milliliters. So hopefully that gives you a little idea of how to accurately measure liquids.